Welcome to another lively edition of The Deadly Experiment. Rick Adams, your host and producer, welcoming you back once again, friend and foe alike, young and old alike, and particularly some of our young friends, since we are doing today part two of the program that we began last week. And if you weren't watching or recording it, shame on you, because we have back with us in the studio two young gentlemen who are my brothers. They are Christian young men. They weren't always Christian young men. They came to Christ and they came to him through, of all things, the secular media, as many of us did. God works in amazing ways. Good morning to you, gentlemen. Morning to you, Thanks, Rick. Travis. Good afternoon and good evening for those who watch at different times. Matt, we have here and we have Ricky. And uh, boy, last week we had a dynamite show. I thought it was fabulous uh, because we did give a testimony to the authenticity of the Bible, how perfect a book it is in every way. But uh, the secularists, the humanists, the Talmudists, those that really and truly do not believe the word of God, do not believe it. And God's in control of that. He's in control of the negative as well as the positive. And uh, that's amusing because God sees us on this earth as little tiny dots on the earth. You ever go up in a plane and you've seen tall skyscrapers and you look down and what do you see? Little tiny little edifices. God is much higher than that in his abode and he looks down and sees us. What are we? Nothing but, you know, pieces of clay that he made out of nothing. You know, from nothing to something. And he can do the opposite as he did in the first age, from something to nothing. So he is the creator, and he is in control of everything. Amen. And uh, I'd like to have you, uh, one of you gentlemen, give a little prayer for our audience today as we begin the program. Go ahead. All right, start off prayer. We'll go to the Lord. Mighty Lord Jesus, we, we come to you today seeking that the, uh, the audience watching this show would be given knowledge and understanding um, and a fruitful mindset, an open mindset to hear what we're saying and not just believe, but discern for themselves, to hear what we're saying on whatever topic, so be it, but that they look it up, Lord, and that you open their minds and open their hearts to the truth as you've done for us and so many of your children. We appreciate everything you've done and we ask that you do this and help the audience uh, to know a little more in the name of Jesus Christ, your son. Amen. 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 Thank you for that, Ricky. Um, I'd like to concentrate on this program, if we may, uh, with the scriptures as our guide about the flood of lies in the end times and how today everything in media is more concentrated, in fewer hands, more controllable than it was even in 1980s, where there were like a whole bunch of media companies. And then they all got gobbled up, and now there's like six media giants going on five, and uh, we're going to see that diminish even more. You know, the Time Warner, AOL conglomerates, and Comcast, and uh, the uh, Murray Rothsteins, uh, who disguises himself as, uh, as a, a red Redstone, Sumner Redstone, uh, in his last days, and, and all of the attorneys and family squabbling over who's going to get control of this media empire. Now, the average kid today, like your age and younger, they go to the movies, they watch it on Talmud Vision, we call it television, they, they, they get online and they see all kinds of stuff today, and everything is, no matter what they say, it's rampant. Pornography is rampant, all kinds of perversion, all kinds of, uh, of programming, which does disguises itself as family oriented and yet there's some hidden agenda in so much of it not everything but so much of it and you know I think of, was a Disney Zootopia for instance that mm -hmm. film and, and how that is nowhere in the same league with Walt Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs that type of change is in the mind mm -hmm. the Bible says that we should watch for the mark of Cain, the mark of the beast, and it's a mark in the mind, it's a control of the mind mm -hmm. through what we see and hear and take in. And you guys are a testimony to that. You grew up in school and with the media, and um, tell us a little bit before we get into specific examples, how it affected you, uh, Ricky? What, what you just said, it just reminded me of what Jesus said to, I believe, the Pharisees about the, uh, the outer cup being dirty, uh, or the outer cup, them cleaning Clean. the outer cup, and the, and the inner cup being dirty. And um, it's not what goes, uh, it is what goes into a man as well, what defiles them, what we take in with our eyes, and what, we, uh, yeah, and what we allow. Uh, 
into our ears, but what you were asking about um, where, where we came from with how this media affected our lines of thought and uh, mm -hmm. the propaganda, um, it affects it very negatively. It makes us uh, hu humanistic. It makes us think that you know, human, humans' will is the measure of all things. Um, it puts us at the top, puts us at the top of the food chain, exactly. and we are not. Um, if you ask most people if they believe that they're a victim of propaganda, they'll tell you no. But um, in my experience, the media in all of its facets is so invasive and so immersive that you really don't know, you really don't know uh, what they're pushing. And there are so many underlying agendas, so many, so many layers of uh, involvement. I mean, trends, topics, memes, hashtags, the tides of modern culture as we know it are, are pulled and swayed by these people at the top, these concentric circles of power that own the intelligence agencies, that own the media. Um, Hollywood and the military industrial complex are two sides of the same coin. And most people think they understand this. Most people will see like Captain America Civil War and if you really talk to them about it at a surface level, mm -hmm. they'll say, oh yeah, you know, it's just America. It's just, it's just how it is. It's just, you know, it's normal. But they don't see what's the political, the, the, uh, the biblical aspects to it, you know, the, uh, the subliminal to it. And, and when it comes to the subliminal, there's just, there's just so much. There's so many occultic themes being pushed out. Uh, you brought up Zootopia. I mean, satirically, <clears throat> as a satire, it's just, it blows me away, you know, and, and parents bring their kids to see this, and there are so many underlying themes there, and um, uh, it's a child, it's, it's considered a child's movie, and, and a lot of these cartoons are considered to be wholesome, and, and that's how they, they rope you in, but then mm -hmm. you see some, yes. some seriously uh, unbiblical and anti-Christ themes being what, pushed what to your kids. What in Zootopia, for instance, if you recall anything that would stand out? Just I, uh, I didn't see Zootopia, just to clarify. Okay. But I, I did, actually. Oh, you oh, did? Yeah. Yeah. So, I had gone with uh, my mother because um, if anyone knows about you know trying to reach your unsaved relatives, you will you have to enter into the den sometimes, and you have to go mm -hmm. with them. So I, I decided to go with the movie and just spend time with her because you still love your family, of course. Um, so we're watching the movie, and um, honestly, it's just what I took away from it was it's them making fun of us, uh, very much so, and. Um, for example, it actually showed, uh, this is just coming to remembrance now, the main villain was, uh, they made the sheep. They made the sheep the main mm -hmm. villain, and this is just kind of connecting like mm -hmm. God, we're God's, God's sheep. sheep God's children, so they yeah. made in the movie the sheep the villain, mm -hmm. and um, even though she, they were meek and they caused no harm, it said that that sheep had a hidden agenda, and it was basically proclaiming that the sheep was the one that had you know the hidden evil plot, and not the big bad people in ah. control, not the strong oxes that were you know uh, discriminating against people. It, it was actually a movie about discrimination and. And um, the weak and the strong, and it made it seem like the weak, the the sheep, was the evil one. <laughs> you know, it's amazing because God creates these types in the scriptures and these numerical, uh, allegorical numbers like forty, the you know the number mm. of uh, probation, you mm. know, forty in the wilderness, forty days, and so yep, forth. Yep. Uh, three, and, and you know, we we're talking about three days and nights in the grave. You know, Jesus, and and, and it's just amazing how uh, Satan knows the scripture better than. God's children do today. He knows it inside out. His yeah. children teach it. They teach it from the pulpit. The, you know, John Hagee's types and Robertson and Falwell and Tim LaHaye and all of these characters. And uh, they're being led, too, because they may have good intentions. But Satan creeps in to the pulpit from the theological schools, and he teaches them all of these lies, you know, whether it's mm -hmm. a rapture or what have you, mm -hmm. that you're not going to have to know the Bible. Don't worry about it. You'll be gone. You'll be swept mm -hmm. up. You may be driving a bus or piloting an airplane, and you'll be gone, and the plane will crash, and everything will happen, you know, and all of these fables. And that's mm -hmm. what the apostles warned against. The doctrine of fables, you know, the doctrine yeah. of lies from the pulpit, and they creep into the media. See, they don't hate Jesus as much as they do. They they demonize a Hitler or a, or a, a Joe McCarthy or somebody who's who's actually telling them truth. In the case of McCarthy, he's exposing communism. They they demonize him, and then they create this whole fiction about him, and then. With Jesus, you say, well, they don't demonize him. In the old days, Jesus was great and everything. It's not that they demonize Jesus directly. What they do now is they reinvent Jesus. Subtly. They create a new Jesus. Oh, yeah. And that's leading to something, isn't it? 
something yeah. is coming down the road. I mean, we, oh, yeah, we hear about the New Age movement mm -hmm. yeah. and only astrophysicists and, you know, the fantasies and outer space and, and uh, CERN and so forth. Oh, yeah. Astral, a little astral projection. They're just getting you to believe. Um, he says it funny. It's um, they get you to believe that it's all just energy, man. It's, it's all just energy, man. Yeah. <laughs> like that, it's, um, it's just your vibration. And what they've gotten you to believe is that you are such a minuscule part of creation and that creation is one big accident so if you fall into that lie and you just believe you're just another you know you don't matter you're just another animal mm -hmm. people fail to realize no we're different you're made in the image of god you have a body a soul and mm -hmm. a spirit and people are now in such darkness that they've forgotten this and they now consider themselves you know just the chain above other animals and they think that the only reason that they're above all the animals is humans killing power and that's just very sad to see that the media has kind of reinforced that heavily um, with desensitization. Um, the amount of war movies and, and it started off, I'm, I'm assuming, as documentaries and uh, knowledge-based war, war movies, but now it's just come to the point of pure gratuitous violence. And now they're just desensitizing people, thinking that we're just killing machines. Mm -hmm. I mean, history is written by the victor. I, I was just thinking mm -hmm. when you brought that up mm -hmm. about Chris, that whole Chris Kyle thing, you know, the movie coming out yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that came out. And um, I mean, you know, Acts of Valor, all these propaganda pieces. And uh, I mean, the most noble and intelligent of our peers are coerced into this system of death and submission and imperialism for this illusion of glory and with monetary incentives. And I'm talking about the military. Yeah. Um, it's just a shame. And uh, it really is. Um, so much propaganda, you know, and it's in everything from the kids' What's shows. What's interesting is, if I may let you gather your mm -hmm. thoughts about the new ageism and oh yeah, that's what I want to get on to. Do you can do it now. Go ahead. They um, <laughs> like I say, there's layers to this. There's layers to this indoctrination, and they'll they'll get you in there. They have many tentacles, and um, uh -huh. what's important to know is. A lot of the time, they don't really care what you believe as long as you don't believe in Jesus. They don't care if you believe it's mm -hmm. it's all energy and, and the real Jesus. Yeah, the real Jesus, the fake, exactly. Yeah. And I mean, they've just discredited and, and just and spit upon the face of Jesus and Christianity. And it's no wonder no one believes in Christianity anymore. No one has access to the truth. And it, they they mm -hmm. uh, so many ridiculous claims in the New Age. You know, they say Jesus is an alien, or they they say mm -hmm. the Bible is. Co this is what I used to believe, by the way. I was heavily influenced by the New Age movement, um, which has so many underlying occultic themes, and that's where it stems from the new age movement they're trying to get this the new age this atlantis and it's really just the new world order with a mask on you know a mask of it's all energy man all the hippie stuff um uh but culturally speaking it's so integrated uh the new age stuff it's it's our culture today is just riding on the coattails of uh, the 60s you know all that free love stuff and the inherent logical fallacies and thinking everything's just energy and there is no god and and it was just one big accident mm -hmm. um but they don't care what you believe as long as you don't believe in jesus they would prefer you believe in satan and worship him subtly and, and you know subliminally subtly yeah. yeah he was so subtle in the garden wasn't he the serpent oh, he was the most subtle of all the creatures you know, and he wasn't hissing with horns and saying, come and make love to me. You know, he was uh, he was saying, I love you and I want to help you. I'm from the government. I'm here to keep you safe and keep take care of you and all of that sort of thing. And that's the way people are being led today to accept the police state, the mm. martial law scenario. A false it, peace inspired by false this peace and mentality. Safety. It's amazing how it's all unfolding before our very eyes in these days of the end you know you mentioned the war movies before isn't it interesting that in the 1930s in this country you look back in history how hollywood then which was dominated by these sons of cain you know they took over elbowed their way to power they were producing these movies against uh, germans against japanese people uh, as nefarious people submarines coming to america monsters trying to rule the world way in advance of Pearl Harbor, which was deliberately, as we have shown uh, with Thomas Kimmel, the great grandson of Admiral Kimmel, who was set up at Pearl Harbor in Hawaii, uh, it was deliberate. Uh, Roosevelt killed basically 3,000 American servicemen uh, at Pearl Harbor because he wanted to get us into that war through the back door. And the fact is, during that period, the mind was being conditioned. Think of those dirty Japs, think of those dirty Germans, those dirty Dagos, Italians, and so forth. And it was subtle in some cases, in others it was not. 
By 1941, the people had already had in their minds this image of these monsters, you know, these so-called images of planes attacking uh, buildings in 9-11, which now we know is fiction. Now, we've proven that that was actually hol holography, uh, scalular holography, excuse me. Um, and, and the fact is, that was real. The attack at Pearl Harbor was real. And uh, Americans turned overnight against the Japanese, said, let's go to war. Let's go to war. The America First Committee was disbanded, and Roosevelt got his way. For whom? For them, for the powers that be controlling him. And so now we see the opposite happening after World War II. The peacenik movement. We've got a conflict in Korea. Now we go to Vietnam, and then that wears out. But anybody who was opposed to those wars was almost a hero. They were the anti-hero heroes until we invented a new boogeyman. Mm -hmm. And the new boogeyman was not the, the Nazis or the communists. Now it was the Muslims. It's Islamic yeah. terror. And where did it come from? Jerusalem. It was Israel. Israel, uh, Isa Harel, who was the Mossad chief, who said he saw planes flying into buildings. And this was in the 1990s. He saw them before they happened. How did he know? He was clairvoyant. He consulted Yuri Geller, you know? <laughs> but in any event, all of this was happening, and now we have that same mentality. Again, going back to World War I and II. It's good to join the military. It's great to fight Islamic terror. Go and kill them. Kill those nasty Arabs and those nasty Muslims. Kill the Palestinian, blah, blah, blah. And so it's amazing how the paradigm shifts. Mm -hmm. if and I may, only kids like you can see through this nonsense. Yeah, if I may, um, it's ahead. all a tool of a division, a divide and conquer. Satan, as we know, is the divide and conquer. Um, it doesn't matter, I think he started to allude on this, it doesn't matter what you believe, which side, as long as it's not the Bible and as long as it's not Jesus, right. it's not the fact of which side is right or if there's a right side, it's the fact that they gave you the choice and now people have to stand on the side of the room. They've, um, they've created the format of division. So instead of all of us uniting and saying, listen, we're not playing this game anymore, we just want a peaceful society that can worship and, and do these things, instead we're all, they have us, um, for example, what, what I see is that they're sitting in, in the audience and we're in the Roman stadium, you know, fighting each other. Mm -hmm. and, they're, and they're just watching laughing us. Laughing all the way to They're the laughing at us, you know, going to fight each other. And what you said perfectly was, um, yeah, not, uh, the, all these false flag uh, attacks on America, you know, that are just, you know, you, you can watch the videos and just seen the horrible Photoshop. The left wing of one of the planes goes uh, before one of the buildings and it's a glitch in the photo in the movie. Mm -hmm. um, I was very young when this happened. I, I must have been five or six years old, mm -hmm. but re researching it now, I realize, you know, like you said, in, in World War II, it was the Japanese, and now it's the, it's the Muslims. And it'll always be someone, and it doesn't matter who, as long as they create the division. And that has to, to do with the New Age movement, because that feeds into the view that, well, that means that no one's right. That means that only I'm right, and what I see is true works for me. If that works for you, it works for you. Truth has now been labeled as subjective, meaning, mm -hmm. uh, you know, e either the piece of paper is white or it is not. And I'll, I'll let Did you, you know, no, both of yeah. you guys, you know you're talking like this, you're, you're considered to be a very dangerous person according to the Department of Homeland Security. I bet. <laughs> you're considered patriot fanatics, you're considered <laughs> questioners of the government, you're not supposed to question the government uh -huh. or the media, you're not supposed to be a dissident and think in terms of, uh, for instance, the sovereign citizen movement or individual mm -hmm. rights. You're supposed to obey the government. And that was under Woodrow Wilson, this whole new change in America. From America, the homeland of freedom and, and, and opportunity for people fleeing those wars in Europe, yeah. then being conditioned to accept a whole new philosophy of doing what the government wanted you to do. Yeah. That was patriotism. Now it's patriotism again. Patriotic to do what the government says. And the media swear to it, naturally, yeah. since they're owned by the same family. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's just amazing. Um, you know, you've done so much research, both of you, mm -hmm. in studying these movies today and TV shows. Yeah. Tell us what you've learned, because I, I stopped watching uh, new television like in 1979. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, the degradation of everything moral and sane can be clearly seen on you know on the uh, on this black mirror that is inside of every house called the TV um, and in our <laughs> pockets too. Um, predictive programming, mm -hmm. the power of it. I mean, yeah. the subtle and subconscious manipulation of the masses, so that 
they're more accepting of events that actually happen. You know, um, you see predictive programming for 9-11 and everything but right before 9-11. I mean, subtle, strange things um, just to get into the minds of the people so that when it happens, they, they're conditioned to believe it's, it's true and to accept the official narrative that the media will uh, spit out them. You know? One of the movies that I saw, and um, it's funny how which movies and video games attracted me, which it was always the ones with either creation stories and it was always the ones that gave uh, an alternate view or a, uh, a symbolic view of the, of the universe. So for example, one of these movies that I enjoyed was The Matrix, and this was a three-part mm -hmm. trilogy. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's funny, the symbolism, even one of the heroes' names was Morpheus. Morpheus is the name of the Greek god of dreaming yes. of dreams. Nebuchadnezzar was the, Bab was the ship that they rode in, and that was actually the Babylonian king. Yes, so right. now Morpheus comes up to the heroes of the movie, <laughs> and he says to them, uh, the red pill or the blue pill. I relate that to the Republican and the Democrat. And he says these words, and he says, um, People will accept the reality that is given to them 99% of the time as long as there is a choice. Even if both of those choices are wrong, you're given a choice so you will feel safe that you chose. Mm -hmm. Even if the result is always the same, whether you pick the red or the blue, the result that they want to happen is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And. Um, and what he says to a T, 99% uh, of the time this works because people can't deal with, um, some people, you know, without an open mind, can't deal with an earth shattering perspective. Well, I'm not really safe. People don't like to be told that they are not in control of their own life. That's what I have found. People don't like to be told that they are not in control and they will deny every sort of truth you present them with and come at you as long as it preserves their self-dominance of their own life, their own self-control. And uh, I feel like the movies are really playing into that, you know, that humanistic oh, yeah. uh, aspect of life. The scriptures, the scriptures coming alive once again. <clears throat> Absolutely, that? the days of Noah, you know, and there was just a movie called Noah that came out mm. last year, I think. Gods or of Egypt, Noah, yeah. the whole host Ridiculous of these how no one and, picks up on this, and, and that's, and the Bible really is the context. We tell people this. on this show, if you want to fight the enemy, and you know who the enemy is, you've got the power. It's in your purse. Don't go to movie. Don't patronize Hollywood. Mm. Don't buy TV. Don't listen to the talk radio stations. Don't publicize or in any way patronize their sponsors. Just boycott them and tell them that. Tell them why you're boycotting and they'll dry up and bust. Right now we're at the point where they're in big trouble, the media, because they're eating off of each other. And what's happening is the dollar is dropping very quickly. We're now in line for a whole new monetary system uh -huh. as predicted oh, yeah. by Daniel <laughs> and uh, in the Bible. And uh, what we're seeing now is the uh, dog eat dog, uh, where the, uh, the, uh, the local so to speak, that God has sent to the earth, he will send before Satan comes, are basically devouring each other. So they're suffering, the Rothschilds too, and their lower minions are actually suffering from the effect of devaluation. And, and so we charge interest, they say. The Federal Reserve is a private cartel of banks. Mm -hmm. They charge you interest to use their money. Uh, and we don't get it yet, because we're stupid. In the Bible, it says use God's it. people are sottish, he says, a little bit stupid. Yeah. And he says so. He needs, he needs the Lord, the Good Shepherd, to come and lead us from the big bad wolf. The big bad wolf is dressed up as what? Little Red Riding Hood. An angel of light. He shall come as a, an angel of light and, uh, and to deceive that he would deceive uh, the very elect if the days were not shortened. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And you know, recently we had this spate of this whole business of hate crimes, hate speech in Rhode Island. Um, and it's interesting how that evolved. Originally it was the Matthew Shepard case where this young guy was picked up. Apparently he wanted a, you know, a homosexual relationship with a guy. Um, but the guy was robbing him instead, and then he killed him. Uh, I guess he beat him to death. And what happened was immediately the chorus of the ADL and all the others came out because they love us so much that they wanted to make us safe. And the Anti-Defamation League, which is the Bronfman crime family, the mafia, they came out with the Southern Poverty Law Center, and they said, we need hate crimes legislation like they have in Canada. And they have in countries in Europe where we consider speech to be a crime, a hate crime, a thought mm -hmm. crime. Like they did prayer and Bible reading in the schools. It might offend somebody. Who did it offend? Them. <laughs> you know, when Jesus said, he that hateth me hateth my father also. Mm -hmm. 
and they hate you, they hated me first. He knew what he was talking about. So now we have this case of swastikas allegedly being painted by some radical fringe conspiracy group on synagogue learning centers, on walls in Cranston, and what happens? Immediately the reaction goes up as program. <gasps> it's terrible. My goodness, we've got to do something. And what is it they want to do? The effect of that, whoever perpetrates this, and it may be some of the people themselves who are doing it, as has been shown by FBI statistics, where swastikas and crucifixes, I mean, uh, clans, you know, uh, memorabilia were planted. They were planted by people of that ilk, the same tribe, in order to draw sympathy. So what do they do with the sympathy? They bring together an ecumenical chorus of preachers, of religion, and then they say, now let's all condemn hate. But where does that lead? Hatred. How about a crucifix um, that is uh, pissed on, excuse me, uh, by Larry David? Is that a crime of hate? Is that hate speech? How about when you, uh, let's say you paint a star of David on a church, is that not hate? Uh, or hammer and sickle, communist, uh, you know, symbolism. Is that not hatred? No, but the police, like in Pawtucket, King, um, the police chief, King, and the mayor, Don Grabian, immediately come out, hold a press conference, oh, we're all against hate. But it all depends on who the haters are, doesn't it? It all depends on what they consider hate. What do you think about that? So this is the main thing that I've come to realize because I was on the opposing side before, just looking it up and being freed by the Lord. Um, no hate speech, except if you're a Christian and uh, you know, our, our country has adopted this horribly misled view that if you don't agree with someone's lifestyle, that means you either A, hate them, or you B, fear them, or that you yourself are dangerous. Just because I disagree because the Word of God, the sovereign authoritative Word of God says that this is wrong, this is not how it should be, and I'm relaying this information to them, I am now a hater. I am now a judger, and it's, um, no. I'm just relaying the message to you as commanded by God. And, uh, and that's where I think it's at right now. If you don't agree with somebody, you're a hate monger if you don't agree with somebody. You know, this whole progressive movement in the media, you know, it's just, uh, they've been corralled into, um, into fighting the same media. They've been thwarted by the same media they want to fight, you know? And, and that's like the essence of controlled opposition. I mean, they know this reaction is coming. So the people in charge of the media just set up these stupid little controversial things to, to corral people onto one side or the other, you know, the red pill or the blue pill. But there's someone pulling the strings on both sides. And that's the gender issue, and that's the race issue. And it's, it's incredible how, how easily manipulated people are. The Hegelian dialectic is mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. pictured like this. In other words, in order to bang a nail into a piece of wood, you have to go backward with the hammer first, and then you go forward. Mm. And that is what it is. You have to create a crisis, yeah. and then come along, oppose that crisis, yes. and then create a whole new synthesis. Problem, yes, reaction, it's, it's, it's thesis and antithesis. I, I was actually, it's funny that you bring this up. I was researching this, and that's actually capitalism and communism. Um, but I'll let you, and it creates their third goal, their, their original goal. The new world order is yes. the one world system spoken of by Daniel the prophet mm -hmm. in chapter 10 and 11 and 12, and he, he tells us where we are today, and folks. It's, oh, sorry. Gentlemen, no, it's been a pleasure again having you on these two programs, and we're going to be seeing more of you. God bless you both. Kind of Looking forward to it. And thank you. Thank you for coming. These are young converts to Christianity, and God raises up his army, folks. Once again, the deadly experiment giving you something to think about and react to. Give us your feedback. Rick Adams, your producer, saying God bless you, and Yahweh bless his elect in particular.